ladies and gentlemen, keep it going for your next act. Give it up for Vicky back. Vicky, last name is Back, B-A-C-K, so Vicky Back, which was fun in school. <laughs> I had children singing, I'm bringing Vicky back. <laughs> Guess who's back, back again, Vicky Back, tell a friend. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> the worst was actually a primary school PE teacher, Mr. Davies, who renamed me Vicky Back Plastic. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact, I later had him arrested. <laughs> Not just for that, there was other more sinister stuff going on. But, um, <laughs> yeah, for me, the nickname was the clincher, so... <laughs> oh, childhood. <laughs> um, I'm actually in my 30s now, but I don't think I can call myself a grown-up yet. Not while I rely so heavily on Haribo to get through my day. <laughs> I don't even know how to iron clothes yet. I instead rely on a system that I call the smoothing pile. <laughs> but um, I function, kind of. Uh, I have a job. I work for the London Eye as a tour guide on their boats, so I go up and down the River Thames and I tell bad jokes and then I beg for tips like a Victorian orphan. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm never going to get from anyone with a British passport. <laughs> and we're all having fun tonight, but seriously, I could lap dance each and every one of you fuckers to Tower Bridge and back and you wouldn't give me 20p. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I do um, sometimes do private tours on the London Eye as well, which used to be like a nice, peaceful alternative until recently when I hosted a Cupid's capsule, which is where you pay £500 to propose to your loved one privately on the London Eye while I stand there smiling at you holding a bottle of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing this Cupid's capsule and uh, two minutes into the London Eye's half-hour rotation, he proposed and she said no. <laughs> leaving us 28 minutes to revolve around slowly and watch this man's world come to an end. <laughs> uh, uh, not, not really a fan of romance. Um, I am notoriously bad at dating, and I don't mean that in a fun, ooh, Vicky, when will it turn out okay for you, way? Um, yeah, no, I'm uniquely awkward in both body and soul, and it does not translate well to human interaction. <laughs> I, I have the hand-eye coordination of a newborn giraffe. <laughs> I cheer every time I step off an escalator successfully. Can you imagine the amount of damage this is capable of causing? Uh, add uh, to that the fact that I seem to be flypaper for a particular kind of person. And oh, examples, I have left not one, but two Tinder dates by crawling out of a toilet window or running down the street. Not the same guy twice, we're not there yet. But um, no, the first managed to be horrifically racist for a mouthful of noodles, and the second propositioned me for a blowjob before I even got my dough balls. <laughs> But it's worse when I stay. Honestly, um, there was a creepy guy who I finally agreed to have coffee with because I felt sorry for him, and he brought his mother. <laughs> and she held my hand and said she'd been waiting for me to come along for 20 years. <laughs> Broke more than one heart that day. <laughs> but, uh, the worst is probably my most recent. I went on a date with a man in a pub and I was telling this story about when I was three years old and I got lost in Spain for several hours. I was on a beach and the police were called and it was really dramatic. I was sort of saying how it could have been like a prototype Maddie McCann situation and I was just incredibly lucky. And my date suggested that perhaps the only reason I hadn't been abducted was that three-year-old me had not been attractive enough to abduct. <laughs> Now that's when I should have left. <laughs> Instead, I put myself in the highly unique position of having to loudly and publicly defend what a sexy toddler I'd been. <laughs> I think I convinced him, though. It's not a hill I ever thought I'd have to die on, so... Uh, yeah. So, yeah, no partner, no children. Do not care for them. In fact, one of my few truly guilty pleasures in life is watching children fall down. <laughs> I don't care if it's a teenager eating concrete off a skateboard or a baby flying out of pram, I get the same thrill. <laughs> but my friends are having them, birthing them, laying them, so I have to acknowledge them. Um, in fact, my friend uh, from Romford had a welcome to the world party for her baby, which, if you don't know, it's kind of like a press night for your baby in a pub. And so you all stand around with drinks and you meet the baby two stars, disappointing, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I realised that the only joy I got from that entire evening was realising that posh Essex names and dog names are now basically interchangeable. <laughs> it's 
seriously, at this party, there was a Marlo, a Lupo, a Luna, and a Selkie. And if you can tell me which of those were babies and which were dogs, I'll buy you a Twix. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, no, no partner, no children. I have decided instead... I would... oh, oh.